Hey everyone, welcome back to Figma Fusion Studio. Today we're diving into something fun and unexpected, building an interactive prototype option right inside the Figma site feature introduced at Config 2025. Now I know most of you have probably already explored the new Figma site interface, so I won't go deep into all the menus or options today. Before we begin, just a quick note, while the new Figma site tool gives us a lot of layout and interaction power, and even lets us publish real websites like in tools such as Framer, today's video won't be a full walkthrough of the site builder. That's coming up in a later video. Right now, we're going to have some fun by creating a simple puzzle experience using the new Figma site tool. Ideally, a fully interactive puzzle would require true draggable behavior. And while draggable interactions aren't yet supported in regular Figma design mode, the good news is they're available in Figma site. So let's get started. First, click on the Figma icon in the top left corner and from the dropdown, select site. We're going to start with a blank page, so no need to choose any template. We'll be building our custom layout from scratch. Now that we're inside the Figma site editor, you'll notice two different artboards by default, one for desktop and one for mobile. Unlike Figma's regular design mode, here you can actually build fully responsive websites, which is one of the biggest advantages of the site feature. But for this video, we're only focusing on the desktop version. So go ahead and delete the mobile artboard. Just keep in mind, you can't delete all of them, at least one artboard must remain, so we'll keep the desktop view for our puzzle demo. Now we're switching back to design mode because some of the plugins we'll use to create the puzzle aren't currently supported in the Figma site environment. I already have the image ready. The original size is 1280 pixels wide, but I'm resizing it to 800 pixels while keeping the aspect ratio locked, just to fit better on the canvas. Next, I'll create a frame using the shortcut F, and make sure it's the same size as the resized image, 800 by whatever height the image adjusts to. Then, I'll move the image inside the frame so it becomes nicely contained. Now select the frame that contains the image, and from the right-hand panel, go to the Layout Grid section. I'm choosing a grid layout of 8 rows and 10 columns based on the image I'm using. You can adjust these numbers depending on how complex you want your puzzle to be. Next, click on the image inside the frame, and in the right side panel, set its position to Absolute. This step is really important. We're going to draw shapes on top of the image to create the puzzle pieces, and if the image isn't set to Absolute Positioning, you won't be able to layer things properly. Next, select the Frame tool, shortcut key F, and draw a frame that matches the exact size of one grid cell, starting from the first column and row. Make sure it snaps properly to the grid line so it fits perfectly inside one cell. Once you have the first frame aligned correctly, duplicate it and continue placing copies across the grid, filling all the columns and rows. This will act as the base for your puzzle piece shapes. Take your time with this step. Accurate alignment will make slicing and interactions later much smoother. Now I'm duplicating the frame container, so we'll have one backup copy for later use. This is useful if you want to create overlays, add hover effects, or reuse the original layout. Next, select all the frames inside the container, including the image, and then go to the plugins menu. Search for a plugin called Image Cutter and click on it. The plugin will automatically slice the image based on the frames we've drawn, cutting the image into perfect pieces that match our grid layout. Once the image has been cut and distributed across the frames, go ahead and delete the original image, the one we had set to absolute position earlier. Now, ungroup the main container to separate all the puzzle pieces. Then, select all the individual frames that now contain the sliced image parts. These are your puzzle pieces. Next, let's give some spacing between each frame to separate the puzzle pieces. Select all the frames and from the right-hand panel, go to the spacing settings or simply use shift up arrow a few times to add even spacing vertically and horizontally. Now for the fun part, we're going to randomize the position of the puzzle pieces. Head to the plugins menu again and this time search for a plugin called Property Randomizer and run it. In the plugin panel, Make sure to enable both the x-axis and y-axis options, since we want to shuffle the puzzle pieces in all directions. Once that's set, just click Run, and the frames will be randomly repositioned, giving us a scrambled puzzle layout.
Now, after randomizing the puzzle pieces, you might notice that all the image frames are overlapping slightly, acting like overlays. Because of this, it's difficult to select individual images or interact with them easily. To fix that, we'll simply add some extra spacing between the pieces. Use your arrow keys, especially the up arrow, to nudge them apart vertically and give more breathing room. In my case, I'm increasing vertical spacing intentionally because I want the puzzle interaction to feel more spread out and freeform. But feel free to adjust the spacing based on your own puzzle idea or layout preference. There's no fixed rule here. Before moving on, let's duplicate the frame container one more time. This gives us an extra backup with the original image and grid layout, just in case we need to refer back or face any issues later. Now, select all the frames inside this new duplicate and select all the frames and add a border. This will help us see the grid lines clearly. Then, reduce the opacity of the image inside to about 10%, so it's just a faint background guide. Rename this container as grid so it's easy to identify later. Now copy this grid frame, go back to your Figma site page, and paste it inside the desktop artboard. This will act as a subtle guide in the background as users try to solve the puzzle. Now align the grid frame as needed. In my case, I'm placing it in the top left of the screen so it acts as a guide for where the pieces should go. Next, head back to design mode, select all of the scrambled puzzle pieces, and paste them into the site page. This time, align them to the right side of the artboard. These will be the draggable pieces the user interacts with. Finally, we'll need a reference image so users know what they're trying to build. Just copy the original image from design mode, paste it into the site page, resize it to 300 packs wide, and align it to the bottom left of the screen. This gives users a visual goal without taking up too much space on the screen. Now, if your puzzle grid image is still visible, go ahead and hide it. Next, select all the puzzle pieces on the canvas, then switch to prototype mode from the top right corner of Figma. With everything selected, go to the right-hand interaction panel, and under the ePlay section, choose the draggable option. Make sure to enable momentum. This will give the pieces a smooth drag feel, which feels more natural during interaction. Set the boundary option to anywhere, so users can move pieces freely across the screen. If your puzzle is grouped or placed inside a frame, you can also set the boundary to parent, so the pieces will only move within the limits of that container, useful if you want to control the space. You can also pick any cursor style, it's not critical, so feel free to go with your preference. Here in prototype mode, you'll notice there are a lot of new interaction options introduced recently, including advanced features like parallax scrolling and more. We're not diving into all of those today, but don't worry, I'll be covering each of these new features in upcoming videos. Now let's test the puzzle. Click on the preview button to open the page. Unlike design mode, where the preview opens in a new browser tab, the Figma site preview opens as a pop-up overlay inside Figma. Personally, I think this could work better as a separate tab. Also in site preview, you'll notice a short loading screen each time you click preview, which can slow down the workflow a bit. In contrast, design mode previews update instantly without needing to reload the whole screen. Okay, our page is loaded. Let's test the puzzle. I'll drag one of the pieces toward the grid. Wow, it's working perfectly. Super smooth thanks to the draggable and momentum settings. Right now, we've added a reference image only at the bottom of the page. But let's try something more interactive. How about showing the reference inside the grid itself only when a button is clicked? To control the visibility of the reference image inside the grid, let's create a simple toggle button. You can design this however you like. It could be a checkbox, an icon, a text button, or even a custom switch UI. In my case, I'm keeping it simple and using a basic toggle with a true-false condition. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with how toggle states work using variables, but just in case, the idea is to create a variable that stores a Boolean value, true or false and use that to show or hide the reference image inside the grid. All right, now our toggle button is ready to use. Let's hook it up to the visibility logic. Let's first rename our toggle component to just toggle for clarity. Then, 
copy the toggle icon and paste it into our site artboard, placing it close to the bottom reference image. Next, go to the Variables panel and create a new Boolean variable. Set its default state to false, since we want the reference image to be hidden initially. Now that we have our controller in place, let's assign it to the image. Select the reference image inside the grid, and in the right-hand Properties panel, bind its visibility to the Boolean variable you just created. This way, whenever the toggle is activated, the image will appear or disappear based on the true-false state. Now let's define the click interaction for our toggle button. First, go to the main component of the toggle and select the false state. This is the default state we set earlier. Switch to prototype mode, and with the toggle selected, click the plus icon to add an interaction. Set the trigger to unclick, the action to set variable, and choose the image visibility boolean variable. Set it to true so the image becomes visible. Now click the plus icon again to add another action. This time select change to and toggle it on to switch the component state. For a smoother transition, choose Smart Animate as the animation type. This will not only make the reference image appear, but also animate the toggle visually when clicked. Now let's set up the true state of the toggle the same way, so we can turn the image off as well. Select the true variant of the toggle, switch to prototype mode, and click the plus icon to add an interaction. Set the trigger to unclick, the action to set variable, and set the image visibility variable to false. Next, click the plus icon again and choose Change To, set it to switch the state back to false. Now we've got a fully functional toggle that lets users turn the reference image on and off with a smooth, smart anima transition. Alright, let's test everything we just built. When I click the toggle button, the reference image turns on and off perfectly, and the puzzle pieces are still fully draggable. This was a fun way to explore how far we can push Figma's new site feature, even without full draggable support in design mode. Keep exploring, keep designing. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends or design community. It really helps support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned.